I was re recently asked to um, explain lag, and although this is a very common uh, component of the golf swing that you talked about a lot, to me it's not nearly as vital and important as the release is, because lag and release really do go hand in hand. Um, so let's go ahead and describe, first of all, what is lag. And to me the simplest way to explain what lag is is just simply that the club head is lagging behind your hands during the forward swing. And that's simply just this angle, this distance between, you know, if, if here's my golf ball that I'm planning on getting to, my hands will basically arrive to the golf ball sooner than the club head does. And that distance, that, that differential between where my hands are in the swing and where the club head is in the swing is the lag, okay, because it is lagging behind my hands. Very simple idea to, 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 to understand when you think about it that way. So how can we use this lag to our benefit? Uh, a lot of folks believe that if you hold the lag longer into the swing, the better off you'll be. Now, I do agree with that for only a certain portion of people who are what we define as hitters. People who are swingers will probably not find this nearly as helpful, okay? Because in order to actually try to hold off the angle and, and hold the lag, this requires some muscular effort. And then not only that, but once you determine that you are holding off the lag, at what point do you let it go? And that's going to be very different for different people, especially, you know, depending upon how much you've, you've turned out during your forward swing uh, can, and what kind of grip you have on the golf club can all be a determinant as to how long you should be holding the lag and when you should be releasing it. So to me, I don't really focus too much on the lag. I, I Like I said, I, I have more emphasis on the release and your ability to let the club go. So let's talk a little bit about how do we create lag. Well, for me, I like the idea of swinging the club a little bit more than I like the idea of hitting the golf ball. So for me, swinging the golf club means that how am I going to swing the golf club and maintain that lag and keep the club head behind my hands? And the easiest explanation I can have for you is to accelerate your hands as long as you can into the forward swing and to be relaxed. Okay, because if you try to force the, to, this holding on, if you're a swinger and you're trying to hold off something, you aren't really swinging anymore. Instead, you're trying, you, you know, by definition, you're trying to hit. You're trying to muscularly uh, manipulate the club in some in some way. If we're a true swinger, we're just going to let the club do its own thing. So that means you must have an emphasis on relaxing it and just not trying to manipulate the club at all. So as I'm swinging through, if I accelerate. If I accelerate my hands as far as I can into the golf swing, then the club is going to lag behind me a little bit longer. And it's a very simple principle. I mean, if you are sitting in your car and you accelerate the car, right, it'll continue to push your, your, your back up against the seat. You, you get kind of pushed back as you're accelerating the vehicle. Well, as long as your hands are accelerating, the club is going to be dragged behind it as well. But once your, your hands are no longer accelerating, that's the point when the club starts to release. And those two things, like I said, they go hand in hand. For a swinger, you need to stay relaxed so that that point can happen all by itself, all on its own. Once the club head has reached its maximum speed and is going faster than your hands are, now the club is going to start to basically pull away from your swing center. All right? So... As long as I'm maintaining speed coming forward, the club is going to lag behind. But at some point, once my hands start to slow down and are no longer accelerating, the club is going to square up itself, is going to get thrown out away from, from my center. And that's where the release of the lag starts to happen. For a hitter, it's a little different because now you're really talking about something like aiming point. Where do you forcibly let the club go. At what point do you basically get to this point where then you go ahead and throw the club out to reach the ball? That's a little bit trickier, and again, like I said, everybody has a different swing. I want to illustrate just one of these examples of what the, one of the variations as to where that, that release point is going to be. If I have a really strong grip, okay, one of the things I'm going to have to do is basically turn my body a little bit more open in order to keep the club face from closing down too much. Because if I have a very strong grip, and you can see I just have a very strong grip here, and I release the club, you're going to see that that club head 
is going to shut closed. So what I have to do is actually, in effect, kind of block the shot and not release the club head at all. I have to just simply continue to turn a little bit more, keeping my hands way out in front of the club head. And that's what's going to keep the club face square so the ball doesn't go all squirrely as a slice or a hook. So for you, if you have a really strong grip, that release point's not going to be until way after the ball is, is almost struck. So you're going to have to be way out here before, now if, as I'm looking, I can see that my release point is all the way out here. That's a long ways to try to visually see where I can finally let that club go. Okay. Now if you have a bit more of a neutral grip like I do, it's going to be a little sooner that you're going to see that release point because you rely very heavily on letting that club go ahead and whip out away from your body. So with a slightly more neutral grip, I'm going to have a, a more of a, I don't know, a, a, a throw out point right about right here. This would be my aiming point, okay, where this is where I'm going to actually go ahead and let it do its thing. So just for you hitters, that's something you're going to have to keep in mind is where that release point, where that aiming point is that you're going to go ahead and once my hands reach that spot, I'm going to go ahead and let the, let the club go out. And you have to really kind of tinker around until you find that exact spot. But just remember, if you have a stronger grip, it's going to be further out in front of you. If you have a more neutral grip or a weaker grip, it's going to be closer to the ball. And that's your tip for the day. Thank mm-hmm. you.